All right, well, good morning, everyone, and uh, I'm so glad to be here. Brother Rich, by the way, don't worry about the rambling part of it. I've been with Pastor Barbara all weekend, so it's everything. So it's, I've had plenty. Of... Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, it's, I've been with. <laughs> Absolutely, I've been dealing with rambling all after all uh, weekend, so I've been in. I've been enjoying the weekend. I appreciate the, uh, uh, the barbers allowing me to stay in with them in their home and for the folks that I've been with all weekend that have allowed me to feel like I am right at home. And it's a privilege to be here with you and to uh, give you the message that God's laid on my heart this morning. We'll be in prayer for your church as well. And uh, we're excited. I, I say we, of course, with my wonderful fiance and I, of course, she can't be here. But I do have pictures on my phone, by the way, in case anybody wants to see her. But but uh, she and I are excited. We'll be getting married on July 7th, and so we are excited about the future that God is, is giving to us, wherever that may be, and we're just in prayer about this church and, and wherever God would have us to be. And uh, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Turn, turn your Bible's book of James, chapter 1, if you would. And when you find your place, let's stand out of respect of God's Word once you find your place. We'll be in James, chapter 1, this morning. And as I said, once you find your place, I'd ask you if you would please stand, and we'll get right into the reading. James, chapter number 1. James chapter number 1, and we'll start in verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. This morning I want to preach to you on a subject that the Lord has laid on my heart. And the, que- the question that needs to be asked this morning is, do you need directions? Do you need directions in your life? And let's, let's go ahead and have our heads bowed and eyes closed. We'll pray and I'll get right into the message. Heavenly Father... We thank you for this opportunity to be here in your house this morning to worship you and, and to look into your word briefly and draw closer to you. I do pray that you would hide me behind the cross and that the words that are spoken this, this morning are your words and not mine. And I pray that it would be a blessing and a, and a challenge to us all this morning and that you would give us exactly what we need from your word. And I pray you'd be, be with the fellowship to follow as well. And we ask all this now in your name. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Thanks so much for standing. James chapter 1 gives us uh, lots of... Uh, Good verses here that, that tells us about how that, again, verse number two uh, is, is a great starting point in that it talks about when you fall into diverse temptations. That tells us, guess what? We're going to fall into temptations. There's, there's no way of going around it. There's no way of trying to go over it or under, underneath those temptations. God provides those temptations as testings in our lives to make sure that we are we, where we're supposed to be in our lives. He gives us that direction. Uh, there is a story of of a, a, a preacher that was going, uh, he was asked to uh, speak at a meeting. He lives, uh, li- in, lives in North Carolina, and he was asked to give a meeting in, in South Carolina to preach a revival meeting. And uh, the problem was this particular preacher was not very good with directions. His wife was the navigator. And many times that might be the scary part. It should be the other way around. But, uh, many, but many times that's the scary part. But the wife was very good at navigating. This was before GPSs came out. So this is where we had to rely on on our, on our knowledge, if you will, of, of the roads, and uh, so, that, so she was there to try and help him out. So they were traveling, and uh, so she said, she said to her, turned to her husband, she said, I'm going to take a quick uh, nap, and so all you have to do is just make sure you don't miss this turn. There's going to be like a, a Y split, and you have to go this direction, and then there's this other direction you need to go to, and, and do not miss those turns. But I, I am, it's been a long day. We've been driving all morning. I'm going to take a short nap. Just make sure you don't miss that turn, those couple of turns, and we'll be fine. And as soon as she's telling him this, the, the preacher gets nervous. Oh, boy. If she falls asleep and I make a wrong turn, we're in trouble. Well, guess what happened? He made the wrong turn. As soon as she woke up, she realized that they were on the, uh, on the other side of the state. They were supposed to be in the eastern side of the state, and it turns out they were near Tennessee. And so she got very panicky and realized, we're going to be late for our meeting. And, uh, the, of course, the preacher turns to his wife and said, Woman, you should have stayed up all, mo- all morning so you could give me those directions. He can't take a nap. So the point of that was that, is that uh, many times we need directions in our lives, but especially before we had GPSs. We needed directions. We needed to have a general knowledge of how to get to 
where we needed to go. And so this morning I want to give you four quick points that I hope will be not just a blessing to you, but also a challenge to you and your heart. As Christians, we need to be challenged on a daily basis, I believe. There's too many Christians that are in their comfort zone and don't move away from that, and, and they want to stay right there. They don't want to be challenged, or they don't want to try and try new things. But this morning we want to give you a blessing, but also a challenge from God's Word. And I'll, I'll give you four points this morning on needing directions. Number one, you need directions to find God's peace. You need directions to find God's peace. Now, I hope you have your fingers ready because we're going to be turning to a lot of Scripture this morning. Turn to the book of Isaiah, if you would, please. Isaiah chapter 26. And the reason I do this a lot when I preach is I, I like to make sure that folks are there with me so that they don't hear from my, what could be just my opinion or if I'm just trying to quote Scripture. I want, our, I want the folks to be able to see exactly what I'm talking about and not just take my word for it. Plus, it gives you a chance to look at Scriptures you haven't poss possibly seen in a while. So Isaiah chapter 26, Isaiah chapter 26 and verse number 3. In verse number 3, the Bible says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Can you imagine, for a second, to be able to experience God's perfect peace, the kind of peace that God Himself is able to experience. That's what this verse is talking about here. The, the actual peace that God Himself uh, experiences in, in His life is something we can have if we do two things. If our mind is stayed on Him, and as we trust in Him, God will give us that perfect peace. Uh, in, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Too many Christians never experience God's peace, and they take their, try and take their own directions to find it. And guess what? They never do. They never do find it on their own. We try and, just like that preacher, he, he tries to figure it out on his own. Okay, my wife's taking a quick nap. I'm going to see if I can actually do this on my own. And what happened? He went the wrong way and was far, farther away than he should have been. So God's perfect peace is available to us, and many times we don't take advantage of it. All we have to do is keep our minds stayed on Him and, and make sure that our, our minds are not on the things of this world. I'm not talking about just the uh, television programs or the, on the things on the Internet as far as what can contaminate our minds, but to not have our minds so focused on, on things that might get us to worry or to fear. Those things, of, I wonder if the bill's going to be paid this, this month. Or I wonder, I wonder if we're going to be able to have enough groceries. Or I wonder if, if, if our... Our son or daughter is going to be able to make it through this, uh, through this year in school. Those kinds of things that tend to bring worry and fear into our lives. We shouldn't have our mind fixated on those things. Our mind should only stay on Him and trust in Him. And guess what? If we do that, we will have perfect peace. Many times uh, people that, uh, that I've come in contact with that are uh, involved in a lot of things, as far as those major things that get a hold of people's lives, like the drugs and the alcohol and those things that literally take over and ruin a person's life, is because they try and drown out those things in this world that they seem to think, well, if I can, if I can take this and put it in my body, then it'll help me forget about all the problems that I have. But the truth is, they'll never find that perfect peace in those uh, things that they put in their bodies. It's not going to happen. It, 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 it's one of those things where they just keep wanting more, and they want more, and they want more. You know what peace is? is? Is peace is just something that God puts in our hearts that where we say God's going in control, He's going to take care of the situation, and I actually don't have to do much of anything because God has His hand on this world. He's going to take care of what's going on in this world. We were just in with Sunday school going through Revelation, how that there might be fear in our hearts about what's going to come. Even and and I can tell you this much: if, I, I've experienced fear as the same thing. Every one of us experience fear as far as knowing what this world might come to. But God challenges us and he says, don't fear because my hand is upon you. I am in control. And as soon as we get, grab a hold of that and not just know it, but actually apply it to our lives, that perfect peace can be in our hearts. We need directions to find God's peace this morning. Maybe you do. Maybe you haven't experienced God's peace in a while. And, and just that sense of just relaxing and saying, God's just under, he's under control and I don't have to do much of anything about it. He has his hand on this world. You know that, that song in the Sunday school in the, or junior church they teach the kids? He's got the whole world in his hands. And I've been able to hold on to that song for as long as I can remember. Because I know he's got the whole world in his hands. And I don't have to worry or fear or fret about tomorrow. Because I know who holds tomorrow. We have that song in our songbook. And I'm thankful for that as well. 
So, uh, number one, do we need directions to God's peace? But number two, do you need directions to get your prayers answered? Go back to the book of James, if you will, chapter 1. We're going to take a look back at those uh, couple of verses I want to get into. James 1. You might, you might already have your place there. James chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind, and tossed. So one question we could ask this morning is, do you ask God, when you, when you get on your knees and you pray and, and, and start to talk to God, do you ask God to answer your prayer in faith and just believe that He's going to take care of, of the need that you have in your life and just pray with the right motives and the right attitude that God's going to take care of it? Or do you ask Him to help you get out of the mess that you made? Now, the, now, what, now the answers are what? Yes and yes. We've done both. We have done both. We've, we've asked God to help us, and we've asked God to get us out of the mess we've made. Uh, Book of Psalms, chapter 66, and verse number 18 is a, is a, is a verse that's powerful and, and convicting as well. And the Bible says there, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You know what that means? Is that if there's something that's unconfessed, if there's something that's still being brushed under the rug, a sin that we've committed or something we've done wrong, and, and it's still there and we haven't dealt with it, guess what? We go, to our, we go to our prayer closet and we pray and ask God to help. His ears are turned off. He has earplugs on. He's not going to hear our prayers. We need to get those things out of the way, and, and then once that takes place, he will turn his ear to us, and he will listen to our prayers. But we have to get the iniquity out of our lives first and make sure that our hearts are clean and are pure before God so that he can answer our prayers properly. We can get our prayers answered, obviously, but it comes with stipulations. Uh, James chapter 5, verse 16. You might be in James 1. Just turn a page over to verse 16 in James chapter 5 couple pages over verse number 16 says confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much the question needs to be asked do you want your prayers to avail much the answer is yes I, I, I know for me and I believe you would say the same thing that I want my prayers to be effectual and this, like this verse talks about here that, that it's effective and something that can that, that God will lend his ear to and answer that prayer in his time, and that it's, a, and that it's an effective way to pray. And, but what we have to do is, is it, it's the righteous man's prayers availeth much. Those things need to be turned away, and those, the, those things that are in our lives that are, should not be there needs to be turned away so that God can properly answer our prayers the way he wants to. Because I, I tell my teenagers all the time, I'm, I'm thankful for, for the current church that I'm at, and I be, get to be the youth pastor plus the music uh, and song leader, and I tell my teenagers all the time, remember this, that God is literally on the edge of his seat. He wants to answer your prayers, but there's just a couple things we got to do first in order for that to take place. And as soon as that takes place, God is excited, and he says, now I'm ready to bless this person. Now I'm ready to uh, get excited about what I'm going to do in this person's life. Now that the junk and the garbage is out of that person's life, now I can fully answer their prayers and fully bless them like I want to. But again, we need to make sure that we uh, take care of some things first. If you haven't heard of the uh, axe acrostic for prayer, let me give that to you real quick. And this is, this is what I believe how we should pray when we talk to God. As, as far as A, C, T, and S, there's four different ways to pray. I believe that God will, will answer our prayers, and it's a very effective prayer. Letter A is adore. Just adore him for a while. Once we get on our knees and pray, just thank, just, uh, thank God for who he is and say, God, I, you, are, you are wonderful. You've been so wonderful to me. Uh, your, your word is fantastic and how your word speaks to my heart. And just adore him and who he is for a while. Then C is to confess. Confess your sin. Confess those things that are in your life. T is to be thankful. Thank him for who, as I said, thank him for who he is. And, and thank, thank him that he confesses sin and, and is faithful and just forgive us of our sin. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness, First John 1, 9. Just thank him for all the blessings that he's given you in your life. A, a roof over your head, a bed to sleep in every night and food in the refrigerator, all those things that sometimes we take for granted. Just be thankful to him. And then, S is, and then the letter S is supplication, those things that we do send our requests to him and, and ask God for someone to be saved or ask God to help with a family member in their life or help a, a co-worker to get saved or some, something along those lines, supplication, or even simple requests about maybe our own health or our own needs. Those things are, are, are what I believe should be in every prayer when we talk to God, adoring him, confessing, our sin, thankfulness to him, and then our supplication should go up to him in our requests. And so once we get all those things done 
and we need, need, those, uh, to, need, need to use those directions in our lives, and then our, I believe our prayers can get answered. Because I, I still believe in the power of prayer, and that, the, and that when we pray and get on our knees before God, and when we do get all those things out of the way first, that God is, has his ear to our, to our, to our uh, attention, to his attention to us, that he can listen to our voice, and that his, he, he can do great and mighty things with the power of prayer. I'm thankful for a grandmother that lives in Oklahoma, and she prays for me every single day. She's been praying for me since I was born, and she's a, 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 very, a, a very studious and a, big, and a really, um, what's the word I'm looking for, prayer warrior, one of the greatest prayer warriors in my life. And uh, we need more prayer warriors in our country. We need more prayer warriors to, to be on their knees on a, on, on, even, even for hours in a day just praying for our country and praying that God will still have his hand on this country. may not have his hand on this country much longer, but that to be able to keep us safe and to keep us where we, where we ought to be with him and just to pray and, and ask God for his direction and his guidance. We need more prayer warriors in our, in our churches as well to keep praying for our pastor and to keep praying for the, the men in leadership that, that, they will, that God will guide them to show them the, the direction that, that uh, he wants the, this church to go forward in. And we need to use our prayer. Many times, prayer is the most underused thing that a Christian uh, uh, does, does not use. It's, but it's the most powerful thing. But it's so underused and so undervalued. We need to get back to getting on our knees before God and asking Him for our direction and guidance in life. Point number three, do you need directions to hear God's voice? Turn to, uh, turn to the book of John, if you would, please. John chapter 10. Book of John. John chapter number 10, and we'll be taking a look at and start in verse number 24. John chapter 10, and I do love to hear that God's people in church are flipping their pages in their Bibles. That's one of the things that's music to a preacher's ear is that people are attentive, and I thank you for your attentiveness thus far in turning to these scriptures and seeing what God has to say. It's a wonderful thing to hear. Uh, John chapter 10, verse number 24, and Bible says, Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, how long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. There's been, uh, I, I've dealt with uh, some folks over, over the last couple of years, how that they've come to me about having doubts about their salvation. And maybe you've dealt with that before. Maybe you've had doubts about your salvation, how the, maybe it's Satan that's trying to get a hold of you just to say, you, you didn't really get saved when you got saved. You didn't really, with the, with the right motive, ask Christ into your heart. You didn't really do it the right way. You should have said this, and you, you weren't eloquent in your speech when you, when you were trying to get saved. You didn't do this or that. And so you've, you've, maybe you've had doubts about your salvation. Uh, the, one, the one thing I can tell you from this passage of Scripture is that if you hear God's voice speaking to your heart, you're one of his sheep, and you don't have to worry about that. If, if you hear God's voice, you hear, that, you hear the Holy Spirit speak to your heart, whether it's through conviction or whether it's through comforting and saying, I'm, I'm just, I just want to be here to be a comfort to you, things are going to be okay, and he gives that peace that we talked about earlier, that peace that passes all understanding. If you know that you've heard God's voice, you're one of his sheep. But then there's a flip side to that coin. If you haven't heard God's voice either in a long time or really ever, if you, if you can't discern the, from the Holy Spirit and what, who Satan is as far as if he's speaking to you or, or if it's uh, the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart, then get your, make sure that that's settled in your heart and you don't walk out these doors this morning without getting that settled in your heart. Too many, I believe there's too many people that are in our pews in our country that genuinely are not saved. Now, they'll play the game. And they come to church, they know how to dress right, they know how to say the right things, they know, they know how to carry their Bible in their, in their arm like this, and they, they know how to act and play the game, but they're, they're, just not, they're just not born again, they're not Christians, they're not the real deal. But if you hear God's voice, then you know that you're one of his sheep. We have to take time, and this is something I tell to teenagers all the time, is that we need to take time to shut off all the noise and the distractions to listen to God's voice. Remember that verse that says, be still. And know that I am God. There's way too many, I, I guarantee you, and my dad is, and I'm a preacher's kid and, have, and uh, have seen my dad do this a lot when he gets behind the pulpit, is that if he's talking about that particular verse, what he'll do is he will, is he will come up and he'll say, so what we're going to do is we're going to have 60 seconds, we're going to have one minute of total silence. And he wouldn't say a thing. He'd sit there like this. 
And that would, go, that would go on for a whole minute. I just did it for three or four seconds, if, if that. But he would do it for a full minute. And there'd be people that are shaking a little bit. They're like, they're moving their fingers and arms a little bit. You're getting a little edgy. Because you know what that is, though, is that is we're, we're not used to things being still. We're used to things, we're used to being active. We're used to doing things. We're used to, especially with teenagers, we're used to putting the iPod and we're putting the earbuds in our phones listening to our music or, or watching a television program or something. We're so used to noise and just being active doing something that if we dare even try to just stand up here and go for 60 seconds like this, it would make us nervous. It would make us absolutely nervous. We, some, of us, some of us might have a heart attack if we tried to even do that. But we have to take time in, a, in our prayer closet, when we're at home or wherever our prayer closet may be. Take time to shut off that noise, whatever that is. T- turn off the television set. Turn off the, for our teenagers, maybe, maybe adults do it too, but to shut off our iPods and our, and our cell phones and to put those things aside and go into our prayer closet. Have all the noise shut off. And you, you know what happens when we do that and we have an attentive ear to the Holy Spirit? He will be finally be able to speak to us the way he wants to. He says, I need to have all the noise shut off first. Before I, before I can get to you so I can properly tell you what I want to tell you is the Holy Spirit. Turn off all the noise and turn off all the junk that's in our lives and make sure that we just sit still for a while and say, God, I want to listen to you right now. I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to make sure that there's nothing in my way that's a distraction and God can talk to us. Do you need directions to hear God's voice? Maybe you haven't heard God's voice in a while. Maybe you've strayed away. Maybe you've, maybe you've gone off into the world and, and tried new things. Uh, I know adults do this a lot too, but especially when I talk to teenagers and they just try and try those things that their parents tell them, well, you, you, you really shouldn't be doing this. And the teenager thinks, I might try it anyway just to see if they're really right, to see if they know what they're actually talking about. You know, teenagers, they, they know everything by the time they're 15. I was, I was the same way, so I know. And so they, they, I wonder if my parents are really right when they say that we shouldn't listen to this kind of music or we shouldn't go out and party with the, our friends that have these different things going on at the parties and stuff. I wonder if they're really right when they say that we shouldn't be doing that and that's dangerous for us to get involved in. We just need to be still and, and, and relax for a while and get in our prayer closet. Turn off all the noise and the distractions and let God speak to us. We need to do that with the intention also and the goal to obey Him. See, many times we, we, want, we want to be able to have it uh, kind of split off where we, where, where we want to hear God's voice, but we, if he tells us to do something that we don't want to do, we're not going to obey it because it's something we don't want to do. So, like, well, if I, I, if I listen to the Holy Spirit, if I get quiet for a while and I let him talk to me, he might tell me something I don't want to do. That's happened to us many times, I'm sure. But we have to have the goal in mind to say, you know what, Lord? Not only do I want to listen to your Holy Spirit, I want to obey what you have for me. I want to listen to you and have the mindset that I'm going to do exactly what you have for me to do. Even if it's the most bizarre thing that, that could possibly happen, like someone might say, I, I'm afraid that if God, if I listen to the Holy Spirit, He's going to call me to Africa. Well, good. That's fine. <laughs> listen, to, listen to the Holy Spirit. He, I, can, I guarantee you that I, I might misquote this, uh, this quotation a little bit, but uh, the, the, the one I know of is that uh, you, will, as, you will be protected where the grace of God takes you. I know I'm misquoting that a little bit, but God will protect you where you go. So what if he calls you to Africa? He's going to protect you while you're there because you're in his perfect will, and he will make sure that you're, you're taken care of. But we have to listen to God's voice with the intention to obey what he has for us. And then finally, point number four, do you need directions to find God's favor in your life? Directions to find God's favor. I feel like there's too many Christians that aren't in favor with God, that God is... Is, uh, is waiting for them, again, to confess sin or, or to do something to get, at, to, to get back to where they're in God's favor and they're in God's perfect will. James chapter 2, if you would, please. James chapter 2, just a, a page or two over from James chapter 1. Ver, uh, verse number 23 of James chapter 2. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the scriptures, the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Can you imagine that? What, what a wonderful testimony that would be if, that was, if something like that was written about us, that we were the friend of God, that we were actually God's friend. He, we have that, that kind of close communion and relationship with him to be a friend of God. I know that that's one, one thing I would like to have as well, is to be a friend of God, to have that close communion and walk with him 
so that I can walk and talk and fellowship with them as, as, as I want to. Then uh, chapter 4 and verse 4, just a page over of James. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, verse 4 of chapter 4. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is, is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. I, I, love that, I love that phrase right there. Pastor and I were just mentioning it a little bit this morning. There, that's one of the most glorified words in the Bible is but. Because there's, there's a lot of stuff that might uh, take place in a couple of verses preceding that that's, that's doom and gloom. And then we get to a verse that says but. He giveth more grace. Amen. I'm so thankful for his grace and his mercy. I, I, I admire those kinds of people that are able to just... Uh, uh, attach themselves to their chin straps or bootstraps and just do right. They don't even have to think about it. But it's, I, I can't be like that. I need the grace of God in my life. I need his mercy and his, and his grace on me to get me through every day. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and guess what? He will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your, hand, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. question we have to ask this morning, do you really believe that you have God's favor on your life? Or, or maybe, maybe you know that you don't have God's favor. You know that you're somewhere in your life where you realize, I, I'm not, I'm not in, as in tune with God as I used to be, or maybe I haven't ever been in tune with God like I ought to be. Where do, where do you stand this morning? And you're the only one that knows. I can't answer that for you. Pastor Barber can't answer that for you. You're the only one that knows where your stand is with Christ this morning, if you're, in, if you're within God's favor or if you're not. That's the only way in which you will be, be able to be fully blessed I believe, is that when we are in God's favor and God is able to fully bless us, then that's when, then that's when we know that we, we are where we ought to be. There's two more verses I want you to look at this morning, and I'll be done. They're both in Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 12. There's two more verses that I want us to take a look at, both very similar as well, and we'll see that when we get there. Two verses in Proverbs, and I'll close. Proverbs chapter 12. Verse number 15. Proverbs 12 and verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes. But what he sees in his own eyes is, is the right way to go and doesn't, uh, doesn't talk to God about it at all. He just, just goes about and does his own thing and says, this is the right way that I should go. Guess what? Bible says he's a fool. I, I want to make sure that I don't go into that category of, of being someone that just looks at something and says, that's the right way to go without counseling with God first and talking to him, because he says, you're a fool if you do that. Verse, uh, then chapter 28 of Proverbs, if you would please, 28, just a few pages over. Chapter 28, <clears throat> and verse number 26. A very similar verse. Proverbs 28, and verse number 26. The Bible says, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. There's that word again. If you trust in your own heart and in your own ways, the Bible says we are a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. I want to make sure that I'm the one that walks wisely and walks as close to God as I can so that I won't be considered a fool according to the Bible. Many of you have maybe heard the verse, Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all, desperately wicked, who can know it? Many times, uh, fo uh, people in the public schools, and, and I know I'm talking a lot about teenagers this morning because that's where my heart is, and, that, and as far as young people, the young people are the future of the church, and it's our job to reach out to them. And Jer Jeremiah 17, 9 is, is a verse I turn to a lot about when I talk to teenagers. There's going to be people in public schools that tell you, just follow your heart. Your heart will take you exactly where you want to go. Anybody ever heard that phrase before in public school or something like that? Yeah, Brother Rich has. It, 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 we, we hear that a lot around us in, the, in our society. Just follow your heart, teenager. As soon as you graduate from high school, you, hopefully by then, or m maybe not, but hopefully by then you'll know what direction you want to go. Just follow your heart, and it'll take you where you want to go. What's that, what's that uh, uh, phrase from uh, the, the old uh, Pinocchio movie from Jiminy Cricket? Let your conscience be your guide. If we do that, we're in serious trouble. That's where a lot of our politics have gone. They let their own conscience be their guide. But the point, is that, the point is that we're talking about this morning is that our heart is deceitful. If we follow our heart, guess what? It's going to lead us astray. It's very deceitful. Just think of the, the, the serpent back in the Old, Old Testament in Genesis, how Satan became a serpent. 
And he told Eve, he said, you won't surely die. You'll become just like God's. That's why God doesn't want you to eat from this tree in the first place, because you'll turn into God's just like he will. And he was very deceitful, and Satan is just like that, and is going to, help, is going to try and get us to follow our hearts and say, I know, I know what direction I'm going. I'm going to be okay, but the heart is deceitful. And when we do that, we fall out of God's favor when we go a different direction than the direction God wants us to go. In the verse of uh, a, a song in our songbook, Draw Me Near, the first verse goes like this, I am thine, O Lord, and I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Do you have that burning desire to have, and that longing to draw closer to him? Verse in Psalm says, As the deer panteth forth after the water, broke so my soul longeth after thee. When was the last time you longed to be in close communion with Christ? To be in close communion with Him to the point where you just were in tears saying, God, I've, let, I've gone astray and I've, I've gone away from the direction you had me to go. I want to come back to you. And, and God gives us that opportunity to repent and to come back and be a part of His family again, just like that prodigal son that went and did his own thing for a while and realized what he did and God allowed him to come back. His father allowed him to come back. Do you need directions this morning? Maybe you haven't sought out God's peace in a while. Or maybe you haven't gotten any prayers answered. Maybe you haven't been on your knees to begin with and, and, ha- and have underused that privilege of prayer. Do you need directions to hear God's voice? So that when you, hold, so when you take time to, to be still and to take out all the noise and the distractions, are, are you listening to God's voice? Do you need directions to hear His voice? And finally, do you need directions to find God's favor? You, you can be in God's favor if we take all these steps that we, that we talked about this morning so that God can fully bless you in your life. I know that God wants to fully bless. I know I want God to fully bless me in my life. And there's things I have to do first. We, many times we just look as we have a free ticket to heaven. We, we're saved. Now we don't have to do anything. No, there's many guidelines that God has put in his word for us to follow. Otherwise, if we get saved, we'd be gone. As soon as, as, soon as we gave our heart to Christ... And as soon as we get gloriously saved, he would have just taken us up. But there's a reason why he left us here after we get saved, because we need to fulfill what God has has made and those plans that he's given to us in our lives. Let's have every head bowed and every eye closed just for a moment. We'll have a verse or two of invitation in just a moment. And then we'll go go to our luncheon. But let's ponder these things this morning. Let's let's really apply these things to our lives and really uh, make it applicable so that we can... uh, carry these things out in our lives. Do you need directions this morning? Uh, The acrostic for GPS, God's plan of salvation. Isn't that wonderful that God gives us a plan of salvation? Maybe you're here this morning, and there's, I believe there's enough people here this morning that there's a chance that someone is here in this auditorium that is having doubts. Maybe they don't know that they're saved. Maybe you're here and you you're, you're trying to remember back to a time when you asked Christ to be your Savior, but you can't remember or you don't know what took place, or, or maybe, maybe you're here and you, and you know for sure you're not saved. I don't know what your case is, but God knows. He, knows. he knows your heart. He knows where you stand with Him. He knows if you're in favor with Him. Won't you make the decision this morning to come to this old-fashioned altar? That's why we have this altar here, is to, is to put tear stains on here and to be able to get on our faces before God and to pray and to seek His face and to seek His will for our lives. Do you need directions this morning, Christian? Maybe you're here and you are saved, but you've strayed away for a while. Maybe, maybe you haven't heard God's voice in a while. Maybe you haven't seen your prayers answered in a while. Can I tell you, if you give yourself to Him and draw to Him, draw nigh to Him and He will draw nigh to you. He'll, he'll try and reach down to touch you and to be able to lift you up to where, you've, where you were uh, once at. We need, we need direction this morning. I, I'm the one that needed this message just as much as anybody else in this room. I need directions in my life this morning as well. And if you're honest with yourself, you'd say, Lord, I, I, I am not where I should be. I need to be a better Christian. I need to be following your will for my life to get the gospel out to those that need it and, to draw, and for me personally to, to be a better example and a testimony to those, to those around me. Please don't wait or hesitate. Don't walk out these front doors without doing business with God because he wants to do business with you. He's on the edge of his seat, and he wants to talk to you. It's up to us if we want to talk to him. Let's have everyone stand. And uh, if, you're, if, you, if you have a need and you feel like you need to come to this old-fashioned altar and to pray for a while and just uh, bring your petitions before him and your supplications before him, we'll have a verse of invitation. As, our, as a pianist comes to play in just one moment, 
You're, if you're here this morning, don't wait or hesitate. Don't put it off. Many times we put things off far too long and brush things under the rug that should have been dealt with a long time ago, things that are in our hearts that should not be there. I pray if you're here this morning and you need directions that you'll come to this old-fashioned altar. It's just a, just a short walk. Don't let anyone get in your way, friend, of get, having you come to this old altar and, and pray and ask God to help you in your life. I have decided to follow Jesus. What a wonderful thing to be able to make that proclamation. I have decided to follow Jesus and there's no turning back. No turning back. Friend, please don't get, let that get in your way. Don't let those, those people that might be in, in the way as far as you're in the middle of the pew. Maybe there's someone that, on your right or on your left. Make sure that they don't get in the way. If you need to do business with God, make sure that you, make sure that you do that this morning. I have decided to follow Jesus. Number 470 in your songbooks. But if you need to come, put the songbook down and make sure that you do business with God if you need to come. Don't even, don't even pick up your songbook. Make sure that you come and pray. Let's do that first verse. All right. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Let's do that third verse, verse number three. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. Amen. That's those are two song, two verses we'll sing this morning. Aren't you glad for songs like that in our songbooks that I, that we can make that proclamation, that decision? I have decided to follow Jesus. If you haven't decided that this morning, you can. We'll be dismissed very soon to our luncheon. Uh, I'm going to ask Brother Doug if he would dismiss us in, in a word of prayer and pray for the food as well, if he would, sir. Thank you. Amen. You're dismissed. Thank you.